Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How's everyone tonight? Good, good. If I could get your attention, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. So if you're coming in right now, please go ahead and grab a chair. We're going to get uh, started, inshallah. Um, again, as a final reminder, um, if this room gets full, we do have an overflow room right upstairs. In, um, we call it the youth lounge. But it is a perfectly capable space for every person of all age groups. We ask that space in this room is reserved to college and young professionals. And sisters um, on one side, the brothers on one side, any overflow space is going to be upstairs, inshallah. We do have babysitting again down the hall towards the right if you need to um, check anybody in. My name is Wafat Manasra and I want to welcome you to the Mass Islamic Center of Dallas. I'm honored to be here in front of you, mashallah. A lot of you um, are new faces. I can't wait to meet every single one of you. My um, efforts here in Dallas are as volunteered as I can be. I like to commit as much as free time I have. I do sit on the, the Mass National Executive Team as an operations manager, so if you ever need anything, um, any support, any follow-up efforts, I'm your gal, both for the brothers and sisters, so don't um, hesitate to reach out, inshallah. We will begin uh, with the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with Brother Hamza, and I'm going to ask him to come up, inshallah, and we'll, and we'll promptly begin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. وعباد الرحمن الذين يمشون على الأرض هونا وإذا خاطبهم الجاهلون قالوا سلاما والذين يبيتون لربهم سجدا وقياما والذين يقولون ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما والذين إذا أنفقوا لم يسرفوا ولم يقتروا وكان بين ذلك قواما والذين لا يدعون مع الله إلها آخر ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله ولا يقتلون النفس التي حرم الله إلا بالحق ولا يزنون ومن يفعل ذلك يلقى أثاما يضاعف له العذاب يوم القيامة ويخلد فيه مهانا إلا من تاب وآمن وعمل عملا صالحا فأولئك يبدل الله سيئاتهم حسنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما ومن تاب وعمل صالحا فإنه يتوب إلى الله متابا 
والذين لا يشهدون الزور وإذا مروا باللغو مروا كراما والذين إذا ذكروا بآيات ربهم لم يخضوا عليها صما وعميانا والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أولئك يجزون الغرفة بما صبروا ويلقون فيها تحية وسلاما خالدين فيها حسنت مستقرا ومقاما قل ما يعبأ بكم ربي لولا دعاء قد كذبتم فسوف يكون لزاما صدق الله العظيم The true servants of the most compassionate are those who walk on the earth humbly, and when the foolish address them improperly, they only respond with peace. They are those who spend a good portion of the night prostrating themselves and standing before their Lord. They are those who pray, Our Lord, keep the punishment of hell away from us, for its punishment is indeed unrelenting. It is certainly an evil place to settle and reside. They are those who spend neither wastefully nor stingily, but moderately in between. They are those who do not invoke any other god besides Allah, nor take a human life made sacred by Allah, except with legal right, nor commit fornication. And whoever does any of this will face the penalty. Their punishment will be multiplied on the day of judgment, and they will remain in it forever, in disgrace. As for those who repent, believe, and do good deeds, they are the ones whose evil deeds Allah will change into good deeds, for Allah is all-forgiving, most merciful. And whoever repents and does good has truly turned to Allah properly. They are those who do not fear, who do not bear false witness, and when they come across falsehood, they pass it by with dignity. They are those who, when reminded of the revelation of their Lord, do not turn a blind eye or a deaf ear to it. They are those who pray, Our Lord, bless us with pious spouses and offspring who will be the joy of our hearts and make us models for the righteous. It is they who will be rewarded with elevated mansions in paradise for their perseverance and will be received with salutations and greetings of peace. Staying there forever, what an excellent place to settle and reside. Say, O Prophet, you all would not even matter to my Lord, were it not for your faith in him. But now you disbelievers have denied the truth, so the torment is bound to come. Both Brother Hamza and Brother Yusuf. Again, my name is Wafa Manastra, and I welcome you all here tonight. I'm going to ask Brother Nabi Zahra, who is the um, chapter head at the Mass Islamic Center of Dallas. Um, he will be able to share a few words with you and uh, welcome you to the program, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. First, ask everybody to move towards the middle if you have any seats open. So we can get the room to the room, inshallah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى من صار واهتدى بهذه اليوم الدين 
اللهم اجعل تجمعنا هذا في جمع مرحوم وتفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما وجعل تجعل فينا ومن شقيا ومحوما رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي. السلام عليكم سيدي. وعليكم السلام. I would like to start with welcoming everybody to our first college and young professional program. We are truly honored and happy to have you with us. And we are excited to have such a program. And on your behalf, I would like to thank our Dr. Omar Salimah, our brother. I really consider him as a hero. Whenever we need him, he's there for us. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you and bless your family, inshaAllah. I would like also to uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Ahmed Taha. He will be uh, introduced to you in the next minute, inshaAllah, who is leading this project. May Allah bless him and bless his family as well. The one message I have for you today is, I just want to let you know, we are here to serve you. We really hope that this program is the start of many more to come. Once again, Jazakallah khair for being with us. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair brother Nabil. Just a, uh, a quick uh, reminder, um, if you haven't gotten a chance to already, please take a moment to scan the QR code on the screen and sign in or register. Um, if you did so uh, beforehand, if you're pre-registered, you don't have to do it again. But it will help us get an idea of all the different community members uh, involved. I'd like to ask Dr. Ahmed to come up. Uh, yes, as uh, Brother Nabil um, expressed, he is leading this effort, mashallah, here in Mazda. So we're very proud to have him and have a program for the college and young professionals. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Bismillah wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa sallam. It's uh, my pleasure actually to be with you uh, on behalf of the organizing team of. Um, this is not a lecture, this is not an isolated. Um, event, but it's a beginning of long-term, inshallah, Tarbiya program that the chapter will invest with the best of our ability in, in you and the age of the college and professionals. So we should not consider it as just an isolated uh, event, but I'm very quickly in the coming, I think I have six, seven minutes only, uh, so we can move to Dr. Omar Suleiman to introduce the program to you so you will know what we have in plan for you. Uh, it's a pleasure to have Dr. Omar to kick off this, this program, and it is an honor because we know how dear to his heart the career and the personal development and building um, uh, people, not building buildings, and but building people, investing in people. Very quickly, what is, uh, um, this is actually the mission and the vision statement for Mass. The Mass National and Mass, uh, Mass Dallas. So we as Mass are a movement, is a movement that invests in uh, people. And our mission is to move people and nurture the long, long life, God-centered agents of change. So agent of, of change, this is actually our motto, agent for change. And the vision statement is, our vision is a vibrant American Muslim community striving for just and, vision and uh, virtuous society. And you'll see the elements of movement, the element of activism, the element of um, taking our, our actions into, the, uh, into practice. Question, who knows what was the wish of Omar bin Khattab Raja 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 If you know, in a gathering like that, he asked the Sahaba, his uh, attendees, to make a wish. Anyone knows what was the wish of Omar? Okay, Omar Rajalan one time was sitting among his uh, friends and asked them, the menu, and they started making uh, wishes. And one of them said that I, I wish this room is full of gold that I, we, can, we can use for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other said, this is not actually the wish. The menu, make a wish. And another one said that I wish this, this room was, was full of pearls and gems that we could, it's better than gold, to use for the sake of Allah. And he said, no. It's not my wish. My wish, أتمنى أن يكون أن تملأ هذه هذا هذا هذه الغرفة بالرجال مثل أبو عبيدة بن الجراح ومعاذ بن جبل وسالم بن أبي حذيفة استعينوا بهم على على دين الله. This is my wish is for this room not to be full with gold or pearls or gems, but with people like Abu Abayda and Salim 
and uh, Mu'ad ibn Jabal, whom I will use, seek for help, to make the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the highest. And this is why, actually, we do consider you as, a, as a, the, the wish of Omar, and this is why we create this program, so you can take the wish of Omar into actions, and, and we consider you as the wish of Omar, this room, mashallah, today is full over 100, and I think we might have reached 160 or so. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after the death of Dr. Qaradawi by a few days after his death, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will replace the Ummah with people who will cover part of Qaradawi. I myself believe that we might not witness one full unit of Qaradawi, but we might actually witness partial units of Qaradawi, and I, I ask Allah. Since uh, uh, I got the news for his death, I asked Allah subhanahu for myself, and I need every one of us to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for himself, himself, for himself, to be part of Al-Qaradawi in the area of your excellence. He excelled in every, every domain of uh, art he, 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 uh, he met, and he excelled in it, and he mastered it. We, not, we might not be able to, to master everything, but I will say that I love activism, so I will be the Qaradaw in activism, and he was. I love the Islamic knowledge, and I know many of you already commissioned themselves for Islamic knowledge. I will, I will, I will, I will be Qaradaw in Islamic knowledge. I like community service, I will be him, and, and he used to be. I like social justice, I will be him in this area. So, let's actually have this layer after his death for a few days and at the beginning of this program is to cover the need of the Ummah from Qardawi and others than the Qardawi. And, and let's go move forward. What is this program? The, these two slides are covering what the program is, what the program is not, because of the time I will go through it. And uh, we will post this presentation in the website so you can go through it. But this program, the objective of this program has two elements in it, Tarbiya, which is a personal development, and the Da'ba. And uh, I, we are sharing this with you so you know that I have something that I can invest my efforts in as individuals. So the personal development and Da'ba, for the first part of the personal development, this program will provide you with will leave inshallah leave an impact on your heart and your mind and your morals and the, your Islamic uh, knowledge from the different offerings that will be offering this, this program. And in the da'wah and activism as well, we will provide you in this program with a chance for you to serve, a chance for you to participate in da'wah activities. And we'll provide you the chance and you will elect to be part of it or if you, if you don't have capacity, that's okay. It's up to you, but at least from our side, we gave you the chance to serve in the da'wah as well. So the tools that we'll be using, and these are some of the tools of the tarbiyah of the personal development, uh, some tools related to the Islamic knowledge. So in this program, you'll find a strong Islamic knowledge, and as well, you'll find spiritual empowerment. I will go through some elements of the program with a spiritual boost. In this program, you'll find intellectual components as well, so it can keep you thinking why and how and intellectually to boost your intellectual capacity and as well as social connection so you will increase the brotherly and sisterhood brotherhood and sisterhood uh, in yourself. And this program as well an element of the activism will have you will, will provide you with activities that can engage your capacity. Mashallah. I can see the energy in your eyes. And uh, I envy you, and I will envy you, and the Allah and the good one, which is a victim, that I, I, I don't have the now, with my current phase in life, the same energy that you have, so you can do many of what I cannot do, my imagination cannot do now. <clears throat> so we'll give you the chance to use what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you through this, uh, this, this program. And we have two offerings in this program. The offering like the, the bi-weekly seminar, like today's seminar, and so this seminar will be every two weeks, every other Thursday, and we'll start it today, and the best to start with Dr. Omar. And there is another offering, which is the small size halakat in mass. Whoever knows about mass knows the tarbiya and the osar and the halakat. This program as well will provide you with the second one for whoever is interested, but the, the, for this <coughs> event will be bi-weekly, and the bi-weekly uh, seminar 
will have this component. We'll have uh, the knowledge component, we'll have the action oriented component. Knowledge, like what? We'll have a, a series of lectures which is forming a theme, and the theme for <coughs> this series is Sifat Abad Rahman, the qualities of Abad Rahman, which was reported at the end of Surah Al Furqan, when Dr. Omar will start the first one of them. So the, the, the knowledge element will go through, we'll have a very well structured knowledge element in this in this program and as well it's action oriented so we'll not leave you to leave the event without giving you <coughs> suggested action items so we'll ask you whoever is interested these are two or three action items taken from the every lecture we recommend for you to work on them at home so that this will give an effect on you during the two weeks because we'll see you after two weeks during these two weeks, these are the two action items in the, in the, in the presentation at the end, after the trauma finishes. The staff will, will suggest a few action items to you. So, this is actual listening to the best of the world and to the world and for the best out of it. This is action. And the third one, which is a spiritual boost. In our program, we'll have <coughs> three spiritual boosts in every bi-weekly. We started with the Quran. We, there's another one in the middle, which is the dua of the, the dhikr of the day. And Sister Rafa will explain it to you when the time comes. What is the dhikr of the day? We will just take two minutes individually, making special dhikr that will have it posted on the screen. So the angels will surround us, and this will give, give us a boost of spirituality. And we'll end the event with the concluding dua. The fourth one, which is... Uh, oh, uh, attendance in this bi weekly is not, uh, you don't have to, you can escape, you can attend. So there is no um, consistency except, uh, asking. But we love for you to be consistent in attending it so you can get the benefit. These, the second offering, which is a small size halakot, as it is running in mass, it is, it is, uh, uh, it is following the Tarbaya system in mass, which is supervised by a mentor who has an experience in the personal development as a Murabi. You might have heard about the work of Murabi. It's a small size, six, seven, eight people. And it's one, six, halakat uh, for the men, halakat for the women. And the following a curriculum, or following a master, master, bayer, uh, uh, master bayer system. And in this offering, we we'll need commitment. If you choose to be part of it, you'll be given a commitment to the best of your ability. That I, the default for me is to attend, to participate, to engage on this. I have an excuse. But there is no, the first one, which is a bi weekly, there's no commitment. The other one, if you elected to be part of it, will be a uh, real commitment. Uh, this is a diagram which is the program layout for the 90 minutes that we spend together. And uh, uh, the talk, the Omar will start right away, and the action items, the spiritual uh, element, and the whatever we're sitting for those who have children. And for the other one, the uh, activism will have uh, will share with you when the time comes. But for the first series, we have Sifat Abad Al Rahman. We have eight qualities, and uh, we'll have run it in eight we eight episodes for around four months. The trauma will start with the first one, which is the Ladina composure. Uh, next week, inshallah, we'll have Sheikh Abdul Abdul Nasser going to confirm it. Not, not next week. Next episode, which is two weeks from now, Sheikh Abdul Nasser is confirming, and we will will let you. Uh, who are the, the next uh, speakers? Uh, there is no time for that, but we'll give you uh, 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 we'll give you the presentation. Zakhmah khair. Ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to make us um, a, 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 to make this a good start, and for you, Shala, to have in your deeds on the Thursday, September the 29th, 2020. I start a new journey with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Zakhmah khair. Zakhmah khair, Dr. Ahmed. I appreciate everyone um, being calm and attentive. Um, it's very nice to have an environment where everyone's present. I'm going to introduce uh, Imam Omar Suleiman now, um, just to introduce him a little bit for those who may be unfamiliar. He's the founder and president of the Vian Institute for Islamic Research and an adjunct professor of Islamic Studies in the Graduate Liberal Studies Program at SMU here in Dallas. He's also the resident scholar at Valley Ranch Islamic Center and co-chair emeritus of Faith Forward Dallas Ethics in Sphere. Please join me welcoming Dr. Omar Spain. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Inshallah, before I get started, can I have you all stand up and give salam to the person next to you and just kind of refresh yourself for 30 seconds? <laughs> You guys are enjoying each other's company way too much. Better. The next thing I'm going to ask you is if you have something to take notes on, that's always going to be my suggestion. So, so since it's the first halakha, inshallah, you're getting started, that could be your phone. But just don't text and act like you're taking notes. Uh, you'll only be uh, cheating yourself. But if you have something to take your to take some notes on, my suggestion to you, inshallah, is not to attend a single one of these seminars. Except that you take notes. Even if it's a very small uh, gem that you learn that you can act upon, believe me, you can visit your notes way, way, way later. Uh, I still have notes from my master's store from 20 years ago. I still have my notes, hand, they're handwritten. I can barely read my own handwriting, but I still have my notes that I can go back to. And I can benefit from until so today, Alhamdulillah, Rahim. And sometimes, still now, they inspire me in the khutbahs that I prepare and the lectures that I prepare. So please do take notes, inshallah, throughout this entire uh, series that we're going to be doing with the Ta'ala. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalam, bismillah, alihi, wa sahbihi wa malala. When I come to Mass, I feel like I'm coming home. I, I'm like so informal. And I think that's something that's just ingrained in me because of the, alhamdulillah, long-standing relationship that I personally have with this organization and uh, what it's meant to me. And so, you know, going to Mass is like just going home and just talking to people that are, inshallah ta'ala, interested in the exact same thing that brought you to this, which is study of self-development. And there is no better way to start your journey of self-development than the Qur'an. And this is arguably the best set of verses to start your self-development with. There are a few portions in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bunches up characteristics that we can benefit from. There are striking similarities between those portions. So you have, for example, Ibad al-Rahman, the end of Surah Al-Furqan. You have, what else? Can anyone tell me, like a bunch of verses that come that you could study for a period of a few weeks and benefit from? What do you think? Surah Al-Dariyat, very good. It's the middle of Surah Al-Dariyat, the beginning of Surah Al-Mu'minun. Another place, Surah Al-Ma'arij, for example. Uh, the second page of Surah Al-Ma'arij, where you have like 10 verses that talk about the characteristics of the mu'min, the characteristics of a believer. Now this particular portion here, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the servants of the Most Merciful, Ibad al-Rahman, I think it's the most pertinent to a group of young professionals and a group of young people that have ambitions in life. Why? Because there is a deep connection, a profound connection between the beginning of this section and the end of it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins with, وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَانِ And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends with, قُلْنَا يَعْبَأُ بِكُمْ رَبِّي لَوْلَا جُعَانَكُمْ إِلَوْلَا إِمَانَكُمْ What good do you have in the sight of God? What, what care, what good do you have in the sight of God? If it's not for your faith, جُعَانَكُمْ here means your iman. What good do you have? What value do you actually have as a human being? Without your faith, without your iman. Ibad al-Rahman are people that have embodied the most repeated sifa, the most repeated attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They found a way to embody what is humanly possible to embody of the most repeated attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you really claim to know Allah if you don't know Al-Rahman? Can you really claim to embody anything of the attributes, the names and attributes of Allah, if you don't embody the most prominent attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to where it is humanly possible. Now, this is a, a, a profound tie-in. And what it leads to for the believer, particularly in this regard, 
is a serious manifestation of solo, of patience. Okay? You know, I could give a million lectures on hardship and solo, and I don't think that I'd ever run out of concepts. Because it's the most pertinent thing to the life of pretty much every single Muslim in the world. How do I have patience? How do I deal with what I'm going through right now? And Allah says, after giving you these qualities, the end of it is, They are given the special place in paradise because of their patience. Meaning, the ten qualities here, the verses that you're going to have here, these qualities are an exercise of patience. They are meant to bring out of you the most obvious manifestation of patience. And there is not a single one of these qualities that you're going to go through except that there is some element of patience, right? So for example, just and I want you all to, to really just try your best to answer me and don't be afraid of giving me the wrong answer. What are the major sins that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses to highlight here in this section of verses? Zina. Zina and one more. Qatid, murder. The, the two major sins that Allah chooses to highlight in this section are murder and adultery. Two of the most heinous major sins that even if forgivable to Allah with, with certain, you know, uh, you know, with a certain process of redemption, are very unforgivable to society. Right? I mean, society never really forgives the murderer or the adulterer. Maybe now, with, you know, just the, the type of debauchery that exists out there, you know, zina is not that bad. But infidelity, in particular, infidelity, zina, is looked at as a combination of an animalistic attribute, trait, as well as a betrayal of someone that's very close to you. Right? Zina, especially when, because Islam distinguishes between zina as in fornication and zina as in adultery. It does distinguish between the two. They're both major sins. But zin, the zina of the unmarried person is not like the zina of the married person, both being major sins, right? The zina of the married person is more severe because it involves now the breaking of two trusts, the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well as the trust that a person has with the spouse. So it graduates in severity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions these two major sins. What does that have to do with patience? Most people who commit murder do not do so in premeditated fashion, right? especially the first murder, even most serial killers. The first murder comes out of, and may Allah protect us from that, and Allah protect us from ever, ever committing that deed, right, of taking someone's life unjustly, because, you know, that's one of the signs of the Day of Judgment, is that qatil becomes very easy, becomes very normal to take someone's life. Where does murder usually come out of, the first murder? In the midst of a heated argument or fight, things get out of hand and quickly, and when you have the, you know, the weapons of murder, especially, right, you know, we're talking about the United States, right, it quickly can become gunshot death, right? And even without guns, you know, a stab or, or an attack or sometimes just, just some, um, you know, episode of violence that leads to murder. The first murder for most people is out of haste out of a person who wasn't able to control themselves. Some of the murders in domestic violence may well protect us in our community. I mean, it's, it happens, right? Unfortunately, subhanAllah, there's a period of unrestrained violence that eventually leads to another degree of violence. And that person, at the end of the day, should have learned to restrain themselves when they get angry. But because they're losing control of themselves in anger, they're able to commit certain things when it comes to zina, when it comes to adultery. It is khutwat, right? Khutwat is shaytan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, don't follow the footsteps of the shaytan, but at taqwa with zina, and don't come near adultery, because you're getting lured in. And essentially, that lack of patience, and the next door opens, the next door opens, the next door opens, and the next thing you know, zina. And at that point, what did I do? But it was a lack of patience, the inability to restrain one's shahawat, one's desire, and get caught in a moment, and then a bigger moment, and then a bigger moment, and then commit a major sin. Now obviously the hope that is mentioned here is that Allah is that even with all of that, the very next verse is tawbah, is repentance, which is remarkable. Because even with these sins, there is a path back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a harder path back because the sins are greater in their nature. 
but there is a path back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? But ultimately, look at where these sins that Allah chooses to highlight are placed between verses about people, ibadul rahman, people that are supposed to be manifesting rahmah, Rubuliyas, serving the most merciful and manifesting mercy in their lives and learning pause and learning self-control to a point that they manifest obvious patience in every single element of their lives and so they don't find themselves in really bad situations. People that are patient and calculated by necessity are going to be less reckless and have less devastating circumstances usually to pull themselves out of. So what does Shaitan try to get you to do? Hurry up and mess up. And then once you mess up, keep you in a low place to where you don't feel like you can climb up, so dig deeper. Make it permanent. Make this low place of yours permanent. Right? Dig, 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 dig. So it's, let me get you to slip into the hole. And then once I've got you in there, let me convince you that you can't climb out, that you can only dig deeper. That you've already gotten yourself way too low to get out of this. So it's haste and then despair. Quick, then it's despair. Okay? So Shaitan utilizes these two things against a person. And if a person has sabr and they learn a great deal of being calculated, being composed, being deliberate, right? Very deliberate about what they do then they usually don't end up in these types of circumstances, the really bad circumstances that you have to get yourself out of. Now, if you did slip into them, you have a way back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure, right? You, if you can prevent yourself from falling into these situations in the first place, if you can develop the qualities and the characteristics to prevent yourself from falling into these situations in the first place, then you're going to have a much easier and less disturbed journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Less disturbed journey to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? Now, subhanAllah, when you go into this, where Ibad al Rahman, let's start with that part here. The servants of the most merciful. The greatest way to honor the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when there is a human manifestation of it that you embody that human manifestation. So when you finish your salah, you finish your prayer, what do you say? Astaghfirullah, 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 and then Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam Okay? Oh Allah, you are a salam From you is salam Right? Allahumma anta rahman wa minka rahman That's not a dua, but I'm saying it's the same idea here That oh Allah, you are this Hence you are the source of this Hence my human responsibility is to manifest this as much as I can in my life. You are the most merciful. From Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mercy. Didn't the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say that of the hundred mercies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, only one of them has been revealed to us? Ninety-nine of them saved for the day of judgment, for the hereafter. Only one of them has been revealed to us. And then that one rahmah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed to us as his creation, Every form of mercy that is shown, from the parent to the child, from a stranger to a stranger, from an animal to another animal, from a human to a human to an inanimate object, all of that is from that one mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, it is a manifestation of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, ibad rahman Allah azza wa ta'ala could have described them as the ibad of Allah. But Allah specifically said, ibad rahman the servants of the most merciful. And the Prophet said, Allah, the most beloved of names to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are Abdul Rahman and Abdullah. The servant of Allah Rahman and the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the idea here is that you, every one of these qualities is going to serve as some level of a manifestation of the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the people who tread the earth lightly. What does it mean to tread the earth lightly? That means that your presence is not a burdensome, heavy, cruel, arrogant presence. When you come into a gathering, 
You bring light and ease to that gathering, not difficulty and duress. You're not a tyrant on the earth with your own sins or with your transgressions against other people. You come in light, you leave light. You enter a gathering, you bring good words, you bring kindness. People feel safe from your tongue. And, what's, and the Prophet said, Al Muslim woman, Salim al Muslim woman, Nisanihi wa yadihi. The Muslim is the one, and one narration also authentic, when Salim al Nas, Nisanihi wa yadihi. That a Muslim is the one who the people feel safe from their hand and their tongue. What's even more beautiful than that is if people don't just feel safe from your hand and your tongue, but they know to expect beauty from your hand and your tongue. That's a blessing. That's a person of excellence. That not only do I not have to anticipate or fear cruelty coming from that person's physical manifestation, their hands, and by extension their legs, and whatever it may be, their tongues and their eyes, I don't have to fear their cruel gaze, nor do I have to feel, fear cruelty or backbiting or slander or harshness from the tongue or anything condescending or anything from their hand or from their physical harm. I don't have to fear it, but I expect always beauty from that person, ihsan from that person. The Muslim, at the bare minimum, is a person who, what? Saliman Muslimun, or Saliman Nas. People are safe from their tongue and from their hand. So, Ibadu Rahman, and the Yamshuna Ala Al Bihona. Allah starts off with, the, with, with what you do before what you don't do. Okay? That what the Mu'min brings to this earth when they walk, they walk with humility, they walk with kindness. And they are actively bringing about a sense of rahmah into the environment around them. Notice, by the way, that Rasulullah sallam, when he says, for example, this is one, one of the uh, one of the, the fala'id, one of the, the, the benefits of the hadith, the famous hadith of the Prophet sallam, setting up a society, when the Prophet sallam, says, Ashus salam, spread salam. Don't wait for someone to say salam to you. Take salam to people. The best of you is the one who starts with the salam. Don't sit there and like square someone up and see if they're going to say salam to you first. You bring salam. You say salam first. You always bring salam. Feed the people. Right? You know, take food to the people. Invite people over. You know, subhanAllah, if you read how many ahadith the Prophet just mentioned, about the believer, you know, taking what overfills of the pot to their neighbor. These are such beautiful, small things, small qualities, but they're so beautiful. Imagine how they'd enhance society. Like, hey, I had some extra uh, of this food and I wanted to bring it over. You know, I ended up, I bought two, two packs of this and I wanted to give you one pack because I don't need two packs right now. Like that idea of like actively going over. Your neighbor would love you, you know? Like that per like when they see you coming to the door, they know it's not because you're complaining about something, but hey, you know, I, I got something extra, wanted to bring you over something, right? So you're actively bringing rahmah and ease and goodness to everything and everyone around you. I want you to think about the Prophet ﷺ. How intimidating he could have been if he wanted to with fear. Like if Rasulullah was a disciplinarian as a leader, that has short-term gains. And it's the, it, it is, by the way, the mistake that every single dictator makes because every single dictator thinks that they can outfear the tyrant that lived before them. That I can be you know, stronger, that I can use fear to control in the long term, and it always fails every single time. At some point, it gives in. But if the Prophet wanted to use fear as his means of gathering the flock, keeping the flock together. How afraid would you be of the Prophet Sallallahu walking into your gathering, right? And how would you, how, how, how anxious would you be and, you know, deliberate would you be about not letting the Prophet Sallallahu see you and hoping that he didn't catch you in the masjid and say something to you and just let me stay out of the sight because he's going to notice something and say something about me. But instead, you find what? The Sahaba loved this man. They couldn't get enough of the Prophet Every single segment of society, rich or poor, young or old, male or female, right? Every single segment of society wanted the Prophet presence, longed for his presence, not just because they knew who he was, but because of how he acted towards them. Not ease, gentleness, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
from Shona Adam Abdi Hamna. He didn't use his position of authority to beat people down. Instead, the Prophet Sallallahu sat with you and you felt so good when you left the Halaq of the Prophet Sallallahu If the Prophet Sallallahu walked into the gathering, he only brought good. SubhanAllah, Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhu says, Kunna ma Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ida the kabna dunya, the karabu ma'na, or either the kabna al-akhirah, the karaha ma'na, or either the kabna al-ta'am, the karabu ma'na. That we were with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we talked about worldly matters, he talked about worldly matters too. If we talked about food, he talked about food too. And if we talked about the hereafter, he talked about the hereafter as well. What that means is that when they sat with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it was so light. So light. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu didn't have much interest in food. You read about him, Alayhi Salatu Wasalam, not much interest in ta'am, in food. But what did he do? He would weigh in, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, with some of the beneficial things about food. Give them advice on some good things to eat, talk about something that was not too heavy for them, but also fun. He wouldn't say, Astaghfirullah, focus on the hunger of the hereafter. Right? And when he talked about dunya, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was not like going to tell them off and say, what do you care about the dunya? We should focus on the akhirah. The Prophet saw him engaged and gave him life advice and kind of had that, he had that presence about him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, rahmah, in, in, you know, yamshuna ala al-ardi hawna, they walk on the earth lightly, they tread the earth lightly, means they don't bring heaviness when they go. They don't bring difficulty and duress. Think about the believer. If the believer just applies the sunnah of human interaction, Starting off with salam. When someone sneezes, you say, Alhamdulillah. Greeting the person. Opening the door for people. Picking up things when they're harmful from the earth. Right? We're not even talking about littering. We're talking about the proactive nature of engaging society. Go to people's genetics. Go visit their, the sick people. Every time you go somewhere, you're bringing something positive about you. You know? When they talk about positive vibes. Right? I, I have to use that. Uh, I gotta use that type of language now, but like positive vibes, radiating positive vibes. He brought that energy, right? Just, you know, brings goodness, ease, doesn't bring heaviness. Why is this so important to the next part of the ayah? When the ignorant address them in a harsh way, they say salam. Because if you don't bring salam to the people, don't expect it back. If you're someone that bothers people, and then eventually you bother people enough to where they tell you off, and then you say, Astaghfirullah, Sallallahu Then you try to act all religious and, and on your high horse, it's not going to work. What are you giving to the people? What are you giving to the people? You know, what are you bringing to your environment? The idea that you can offend people and then not want to be offended, right, is self-contradicting. But a lot of people act that way, you know why? Because they're unaware of their own behavior. So it's, it's, a, it's a gurur, the Prophet Sallallahu talks about the self-deceit. Like they don't think that they're really mean people. They don't think they're, I just came from Canada. Anyone here from Canada? All right, passive aggressive. <laughs> I was like, man, like, I kind of like Texas better. <laughs> Where everyone's just rude to your face. I was like, why do I feel like everyone's insulting me with a smile on their face? You know, like, you know, it's like you go to... I'm sorry, I've been messing with Canadians all weekend. I just got back from Canada, right? Talk about bringing stuff out. I brought that, that American pride, you know. I might, I might as well have been wearing a MAGA hat in Canada, you know. <laughs> Patriotism, right? America first, right? But, but somehow, like, people can be passive-aggressive, right? And they don't realize that they're just straight-up aggressive. And then when someone acts in a certain way with them, they're like, why are you talking to me like that? They're unable to see their own faults. Especially in marriage, by the way. Right? I don't get it. Why is she treating me that way? Why is he treating me that way? I, don't, I mean, I don't do that. I'm, I'm this, 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 and that. List out all the good qualities and the great things that you do, not realizing you have a sharp tongue, too. You're pretty, you know, you're rude. Right? You have a heavy presence. Work on yourself. Don't just expect it from the other person. So Yamshuna ala al-ardi hamna describes a level of first and foremost, what are you giving to the environment before you talk about how you respond to a negative environment? What positive are you bringing to the environment? Okay? Yamshuna ala al-ardi hamna wa ida qaratabatum al-jahiluna qalu salama. 
when the ignorant address them, they respond with salam. They respond with peace. Jahl here uh, refers to anger. Okay? In the Arabic language, jahl does not just mean ignorance. Jahl also means anger. Okay? Foolishness and anger, not just ignorance, which tells you something, right? That jahl comes in the meaning of ghadab in the Arabic language, in the meaning of anger as well. So someone hot-headed, someone who is aggressive, comes at you, and you respond with salam. Now this salam, as the scholars say, is not the salam of tawheed, tawheed. It's not the salam of greeting. It's the salam of mufaraqa, like leave me alone. <laughs> like, okay, you know, you said your piece, jazakumullah khair, I'll move on. It's not even about the word that you use. Right? Like, you can't go assault someone on Twitter. And then they respond back to you, and at the end you just say, So now I get a little bias. Right? It's the funniest thing in the world to watch this sometimes. You know, it's, it's, it's really fascinating. You know? Like, someone just is rude and lobbing all sorts of things, and someone gives them a little bit of a taste of their medicine, and at the end, you know, uh, it seems like this is going nowhere. Salam. Like as if like, I'm applying the verse, you know, mashallah, salam at the end of it. No, no, it's not. Salam is not a diss at the end to show your, your, your superiority. If anything, by the way, that salam can actually undermine the entire purpose of the ayah. Salam is that you de escalate. You de escalate and you move on. Okay, Abu Bakr al Salih, one time someone was, uh, was, was coming at him and was trying to fight with him. And he kept on going out and said, Lay you know, come on, like let's let's go and Ubaqa said, Wa anka and from you I'm turning away. Come fight me, from you I'm turning away. I'm not interested. Right? I'm just not gonna engage in this. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz Allah Ta'ala, one time the Khalifa of the Muslims, he walked into the masjid and he was uh, on his way to give a khutbah and he accidentally, alright um, bumped into something as he was walking to the Mendel. I do it all the time, so hopefully not be yell at me at any point if it ever happens to you, right? But you're trying not to bump into people, but you know, maybe you're knee, you need someone by accident, you, you run into someone by accident. So Omar ibn Abdul Aziz is the Khalifa. And he's a big man, by the way. He's a tall, big man, right? And when he does that, the man looks at him and he says, Are you a Majnoon? You crazy? And Omar ibn Abdul Aziz smiles at him and says, no. And then he just goes on to the menbo. <laughs> and people are going to attack that man and throw him out the message. And Omar ibn Abdul Aziz comes running back and he says, what are you doing? I said, didn't you hear what he said to you? He said, he asked me a question. I responded to him. <laughs> he asked me if I'm crazy. I said, no, tell us. Like, let it go. What's the point? Don't make a scene. You know? So, Ibadu Rahman, Nadini Amshun, I'll be hung up. They walk lightly. When someone comes at them, salam. Salama. Now, I don't want to speak so much about a rare scenario to where you leave out your day-to-day. -day. Okay? The day-to-day -day here is composure. And this is where, if you're taking notes, inshallah, you benefit from this years later. But uh, if you're not, you still hopefully benefit, it, benefit from it in some way. There are sins that happen in the spur of the moment. And there are sins that arise out of long, untreated diseases. Shahwa, desire, for example, usually is the spur of the moment. Okay? Kibir, pride, is usually a long, untreated disease. And Fulayr ibn Iyad, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, and that's why Adam Islam found it easy to come back to Allah. He fell quick and he repented quick. Because it was Shahwa, slip. He slipped. Whereas Iblis, he couldn't do it. Because it was pride. It's like a long developing disease on the inside of Kibir. Where you, you start to intentionally and functionally see people as less than you. And you grow in that, you entertain that thought. And you let that thought become an identity of superiority. So Fulay was saying that someone who sins out of Shahwa, it's quick. They can come back to a lot quickly. Someone who sins out of kibir is going to have a much harder time coming back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَخَذَتُ الْعِزَّةُ بِالْإِذْنِ Even when they know that they sin, their ego won't let them repent. Okay? 
That's in personal sense. How does that translate into interpersonal action and behavior? You mess up in a conversation, you mess up in an argument, you know you're wrong. But you can't admit that you're wrong because you don't want to give the other person the satisfaction of knowing that they were right. So I'm not going to apologize. Not only am I not going to apologize, I'm going to escalate it. Right? And in order to not be introspective, I'm going to magnify what you did to me. And keep talking about that so that can become the focus and the center, rather than my own transgression. Your pride took hold of you, you refused. You refused to let go. Right? That's a way to destroy your relationship with Allah and to destroy your relationship with every single person in your life that means anything to you. An inability to apologize, to take a step back and to say, you know what, I'm wrong. You're right. I, you're right, I'm wrong. Here I messed up. That doesn't mean that I'm entirely wrong and you're entirely right, but at least the part that I'm wrong about, I slipped, I'm going to own that. And in the process, lead by example for you on how to own your mistakes too. You know, it's really hard to maintain a grudge with a humble person. <laughs> they can really annoy you. You know, because if you're trying, your shaitan is telling you, you know, hit again, hit again, hit again. And if they're responding with kindness, it's not working, right? And that disarms that person and that creates more societal harmony as well. More rahmah, mercy, tolerance, compassion, right? In the midst of an argument, just like when you're in a personal sin, in the midst of a personal sin, Shaitan is telling you, enjoy your sin, think about the consequences later. Don't worry about, don't worry about the Tawbah part right now, don't worry about coming back to Allah. You already came this far, you might as well go ahead and break it open. Right? You already came this far, don't go home now, finish it up. Whatever the sin is, this is personal sin, right? You already started, go ahead and finish and then worry about Tawbah later. When you're in the midst of an argument, when things get heated, what's the shaitan's messaging? Say the most hurtful thing possible because that's what it takes to win the argument. You're already here. You might as well finish this thing. Right? Don't worry about consequences. Apologize later. Just like he told you repent later, apologize later. Say the most hurtful thing possible to win the argument. Right? Insist in the most arrogant way possible to get the upper hand. And then think about it later. It's probably one of the most powerful and profound statements I ever read about the Ghadab was with Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala who said, wa akhirahu nadam. So be careful with anger because the beginning of it is insanity and the end of it is regret. You start like a crazy person and then you end in remorse. Did I really say that? I don't know how I, how I did that. How did I say that? How did I do that? What happened to me? I, I don't know how I became that way. I don't know what led to that, right? But the fire got the best of you. And you could reduce it to a one-time slip. And even the best of us will have those slips. Or, if it keeps on happening, you could say, what is it about me that I don't have the governing mechanisms and qualities to stop myself from falling into that in the first place? So sabr, let's go back to sabr. Patience is to hold yourself with shahwa, with desire. It's hapsun nafs, to restrain the self. You see something you, that, that triggers desire in front of you? You want to, but you say, no. I'm going to hold myself. Sabr with hardship is when hardship happens, and the sabr al-ula, at the first strike, I'm not going to shout out all these blasphemous things and say horrible things, and then later on say, astaghfirullah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. No, when the hardship hits, alhamdulillah. Inna lillahi wa ilayka ajirah. Allahumma ilayka ashkul. Ya Allah, I'm, I'm, I'm in pain. 
Allah majurni fi musibati wa khrufni khayra min. All these beautiful du'as, oh Allah, compensate me with this tragedy. You're not going to say or act in haste when the hardship hits, sadmat al the first strike, and then later on say, I wish I wouldn't have done all that and said that. I wish I would have been patient because you had a window where you could have achieved many good deeds. That's sabr with personal sin and personal tribulation. Okay, what about with interpersonal relationships? What is sabr? Hold yourself back. Hold yourself back back when the offense first happens. Learn to brush off the petty. This is an attitude, a mindset. Because man, there are some petty people in the world. Right? And there are mediums that make us even more petty and cowardly. Right? To where people just say things and constantly throw words and do this and do that. Composed. Don't respond right away. Don't respond. And the Prophet taught us these mechanisms of anger that all essentially boil down to pause. Pause. So, the Prophet said, for example, when you get angry, he gave the, uh, the, the recommendation of saying, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Okay? Sta'id billah, say, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the shaytan. He taught us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that change your posture. You're standing, take a seat. Two people are standing up and they're getting... No, no, sit down. Let's sit down and talk this through. He talks to my son, we'll walk. Go make we'll walk. Cool yourself down a bit. You know, say, go take a shower. You know, if we'll is not enough for you, go do a wusu. <laughs> if, you're, if, you're, if you're so hot-headed that the wusu is not working, go take a shower or something. But cool yourself off. And you know what it all boils down to? Another hadith from the Prophet Muhammad was saying, You know, Radhi wa ahadukum, that yes, good. When you get mad, just be quiet. Don't speak in anger. Because what you say is not going to be productive. Because the goal of your speech in anger is not to remedy the situation, it's to win the argument. And sometimes winning the argument is the worst thing you can do in your life. You get mad, learn to not respond right away. Now, subhanAllah, this is where the, the miracle from a Qur'anic perspective in this regard is the preciseness, the precision of the Qur'an. Remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about people who are mission-oriented. You have to be mission-oriented to tolerate the petty, because if you live for the petty, then you're going to act like a petty person. You have to believe in something greater. You have to have a greater mission, a greater purpose, so that when the petty encounters happen, you're able to reduce them and leave them in the realm of the petty. But if you live your life for pettiness and play, then of course you're going to always try to win the petty. Right? You won't, you won't have that perspective. Here's the precision of the Qur'an, which I hope, inshallah ta'ala, some of you can ponder upon. The Qur'an, by the way, this is a recent, um, a recent meditation I had on this verse, on a very recent one, I was reading through it. I've read the ayat, and this is what Imam Shafi rahimahullah said, when you're reading the Qur'an every single time, if you read the Qur'an with tadabbur, with reflection, it gives you something new. So I've read the, the verses, Right? It's a, it's a long section uh, that those who uh, those who say our Lord is Allah, and then they were steadfast to Tanazil, and the angels come on to them, and they give them the guarantee of paradise, and then go on, and then Allah praises people of da'wah, people of da'wah, people of a greater call, who is better in speech than the one who does good and calls people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and says, I am from the Muslims. Okay? And Allah says that evil is not equal to good. Respond to that which is evil with that which is better. Because if you're going to be a community worker, 
you have to rise above the petty over and over and over again, from your own ranks and from outside. No offense, but working with Muslims is so hard. And sometimes the drama is like, what's the, why? Why can't we just focus? Right? But I've got news for you since we're always down on the Muslims. You know, people in other faith communities will, like, will say, working with our own people is so hard. Right? Like, it's, it's just something about working with your own. It's like, why do we have to? If you're not a drama-oriented person, the community will give you drama, and you're like, why are we bogged down with this? We could be focusing on this, 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 and that, but instead, I'm worried about this, 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 and that. As a community, drama. What breaks that cycle? Someone has to rise above and put an end to it. Otherwise, you end up with 30 years of inter-board conflict and failed organizational mission, which is the state of many of our Islamic misogyny organizations. Because no one took the moral high ground and said, come on, you know what, I'm wrong. You want to slap me, you want to step on my face, I'll apologize to you, you want this, let's, no, I'll honor you. I'll do that tanazul. I'll come down from my high horse because the work that we're in requires it, right? The person who does that has to be the bigger person, meaning have the bigger mission. I'm focused on bigger things, you know what, call us, fine. Are you happy? You got what you wanted, you insulted me. People are gonna say, you know, he won, she won, who cares? Let's get back to that one, right? Let's get back to the mission. That's with the inside and with the outside, if the Prophet ﷺ responded to every insult in Mecca, he would have had a huge collection of insults. If he decided to be petty like them, right, the Prophet ﷺ would have done a disservice to his da'wah. What won over some of the bidahs and the khababs of the world was that, man, he's not like them. He's really different. It's fa'a billati hiya ahsan. You know, Ibrahim al-Adam, rahimahullah ta'ala, there was once a, a man who was not Muslim. He said, who's atha, who's pure? The, the beard, your, your beard, or this, this kelly, this dog? And he said, you know, honestly, whichever one amongst us is righteous. <laughs> if I'm righteous, then my beard is more pure, and if, if I'm not righteous, if I'm sinful, the dog's probably more pure in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The man said, Wallahi hadha akhlaq al-anbiya. He said, you have the manners of prophets. How do I become one of your religion? How do I follow your religion? It's Brush it off. Why? Because you're focused on something bigger. Okay? And Allah says, You're going to win people over that way. You're going to win people over. By helping them see a different way of acting as well for themselves. You win people over that way. Okay? This isn't the part that I was talking about when I was saying just, I was reading this and I thought it was really amazing. But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, no, this is not something that you achieve simply through, you know, writing an organizational mission. You get to this place by patience. And this is something you have to ask Allah for because it's hadl and alim. It's an amazing gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to some people. The next verse is what really caught me off guard. Okay? You still wonder. But Allah says, look, if the shaitan, am I out of time? Is that what's happening right now? Two minutes? Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe I should just scratch this whole reflection. I'm sorry I went over time. But if, if shaitan hits you with a moment, a slip, nazlun, annoys you, pokes at you, what did the Prophet say to do if you're in the midst of an argument, if you get angry? How do you stop yourself? So this ayah is basically affirming what the Prophet said. Allah mentioned this in the, in the capacity of the people of da'wah to say that people will annoy you and it's like literally someone poking at you. Like, come on. You know you want to say something back, you know you want to respond, you know you want to get into this right now, you know, and misappropriate the verses of izza and honor and dignity and make you think you're going to be honoring the da'wah by responding in an arrogant fashion. Poke, 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 right? Allah mentioned this in the capacity of the people of da'wah. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the capacity of the people of shahwa, of the people of desire, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ إِذَا مَسَّهُمْ طَائِفُ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ تَذَكَّرُوا فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبُصِبُونَ It's really interesting. People of desire, when shaytan touches you, fools you, right? Gets you to entertain this desire a bit. تَذَكَّرُوا Then you remember Allah. فَإِذَا هُمْ مُبُصِرُونَ You can see, you can perceive now. You're, you come back to your senses. SubhanAllah, this is in the capacity of people of sin. In both cases, Allah mentions the shaitan catching you in a moment. Composure is to put up all the guards between you and the shaitan's penetration, and it all boils down to not acting in haste. People that are deliberate, people that, people that are calculated, are people that will be blamed for being slow, but will almost always end up on the side of success. In this life and the next, and that's why the Prophet said that uh, forbearance, because the hardest thing to be patient with, we're talking about personal patience and patience with tragedy, the hardest type of patience is patience with people. Hilm is from Allah. That's a God-given gift. To end me, in one narration, to end me. Deliberateness, being deliberate about what you do, that's from Allah. And the Prophet said, Al to min shaytan Quickness, haste is from the shaytan. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us people of hilm and anab and make us from those people of ibadah al rahman. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa I wanted to apologize for cutting you off. It was not our intention. Um, we could have listened for the rest of the night, but I want to honor everybody's time here. While I have your attention and um, we're kind of in this uh, mode of reflection, I want to allow us to go over the dhikr of the day. So as was um, as was expressed um, earlier by Dr. Ahmed, our biweekly seminars and even our open halakat have... Um, intention behind them. So we want to take a moment to ask you to renew your intention why you are here to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and take a moment to um, read the slide with me. I'm going to introduce the dhikr for today and then um, as soon as I'm done introducing it, we're done reading it, we'll take a moment of silence for us to really do the dhikr by ourselves internally to benefit um, by the, from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels are amongst us. So as you see here on the screen, the dhikr of the day is um, a, uh, the hadith is narrated by Abu Huraira. Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, if one says 100 times in one day, 100 times in one day, la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. None has a right to be worshipped but Allah, but he alone has no partners, to him belongs dominion, and to him belongs all the praises, and he has power over all things. He is omnipotent. One will get the reward of free intensely at slaves, and 100 good deeds will be read in his account, and 100 bad deeds will be wiped off, or even erased from his account. And on that day, he will be protected from the morning till evening from Shaytan, and nobody will be superior to him except one who has done more than that which he has done. So if you could take a moment, I will have just a timer for 60 seconds. Go ahead and um, repeat the dhikr as much as you can in that time. And make an intention to finish it a hundred times today.
Uh, before we um, actually conclude for the evening, we want to take a moment to do some questions and answer opportunity. A reminder to everyone um, that it is a um, bi-weekly seminar series, and we also have the Open Halakhat program that will stem from the audience of these uh, of the attendance of the series. So in two weeks' time, um, it's going to be in two Thursdays, it's going to be Sheikh Abdel Nasser's uh, segment, and he's going to be speaking about prayers, and it's going to continue on the same theme, the characteristics of the servants. So if you wanted to take an opportunity right now, if you have any questions, we can take them on the floor before we close. It, be streamed or recorded? it is recorded, and it will be uh, uploaded online after the session. So the live streaming is only upstairs and we have overflow room just in case this room gets too packed. We have the youth lounge space for the live streaming and then as soon as the program is done we will be able to um, find it online. And then that leads me to um, maybe the opportunity right now would be to put the QR code back up on the screen. Um, if you, if you pre-registered you don't have to fill it out again but if you have not pre-registered please fill this out and allow us the opportunity to share all the information with you, the slides, the link to the recording, um, further opportunities for the seminars, the open halakhat, and so on. So if you want to take a moment. Any other questions? Over here? That's a great question. So he's asking about the open halakhat, when we will have them ready um, to um, form the groups. It's something that we do gradually as the um, interest uh, grows. So if we have an interest of six to eight people from the brother's side, we put them together, we form a group, we have the mentors on the, on the ready. And same for the sisters, it's going to be the same process. So it's going to be something that once the second um, session of the seminar series comes through, we'll have the open halakhat in the background. We had a hand in the back. It will be uploaded to the MASS website. We have a landing page for College of Youth Professionals that will be linked to the YouTube account, inshallah. Okay, so before we um, actually formally conclude, we do have a uh, closing dua. Um, allow um, the malaika to bless the gathering, inshallah. We have one more QR code I want to share um, up on the screen. Is the feedback form. So if you want to give us feedback outside of uh, this opportunity now, uh, take advantage and um, share that. If you had a good time, let us know. If you if you have some suggestions, let us know. On your way out, please grab a gift. The sisters' table is on my right, and the brothers' table is on my left. It's a gift for you to take home uh, with you. But before before we pass the mic to Brother Yusuf for the closing du'a, if you guys will allow me. Part of development and uh, taking advantage of the mentorship opportunities is also having tangible action items from every gathering that we have. So for, uh, in relation to today's segment, our action items are very specific and very easy to do, simple to do, but with most reward. And it's taken from the advice that Imam Omar shared with us. It's taken from the segment today that was covered. So two things, inshallah. If you can focus on walking in humility and humbleness, all of us, I'll start with myself, to present ourselves um, humbly and in humility. And the second, inshallah, is um, very specific to what um, Imam Omar shared. So when someone mistreats you, control yourself, don't retaliate. Even say salam, say, you know, give them the, the uh, you know, message of blessings, inshallah. So he had mentioned the story of, of being able to um, control your anger, and this is one of the action items stemming from that, inshallah. Without further ado, I'm going to pass the mic to uh, dear brother Yusuf. Um, last reminder, on your way out, there's a PACE table for voting registration. If you're not registered to vote, please take the opportunity. Or if you need to update your address, they'll help you with that, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam. Tabarak ta yada jalali wal ikhwam. 
اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعصيان اللهم بارك لنا في جمعنا وطهر نيتنا نيتنا وتوفنا على الأبرار اللهم إن إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Praise be to Allah, ruler of the worlds, and may the peace and blessings be on the most honorable messenger and prophet, Muhammad, and on his family and companions. O oh Allah, you are peace, and from you is peace. Blessed are you, the most majestic and honorable. O oh Allah, the changer of hearts, keep us steadfast on the deen. O oh the one who connects the disconnected, connect us to you. O oh Allah, make faith beloved to us and beautify it in our hearts, and make disbelief and wrongdoings and disobedience hated to us. O oh Allah, put barakah in this gathering of ours, and purify our intentions, and make us die among the righteous. O oh Allah, we ask you for heaven and whatever of words and actions that bring us closer. And we seek refuge in you from the hellfire and whatever of words or actions that bring us closer to it. O oh Allah, accept from us, for verily you are the most hearing, all-seeing, and forgive us. For verily you are the most forgiving and most merciful. And may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon Muhammad, his family, and noble companions. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. wa